Hello everybody and welcome back to our physics engine creation. We are attempting to create a physics engine from scratch using C Sharp. But, uh, you know, I'm writing this in such a way that hopefully no matter what language you're using or what, which language you prefer, it should be easy enough to port right over. I'm using the flat engine that I created that's built on top of Monogame. And it allows us to get two-dimensional shapes on the screen, keyboard and mouse input, has a two-dimensional camera that you can zoom in and out of the scene. So if you want to see how any of that was created, we do have videos on this channel that went step by step through that, as well as uh, the source code is completely available on GitHub. So if you want to take a look at those as well, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we left off with. And we had just finished up realistic collision responses. And, and now it's not completely realistic because we don't have rotation built in quite yet or friction as well. They do collide and react very realistically for where we are. And in fact, most of the time, lots of times with two-dimensional video games, you really don't need rotation because your, your character is always standing upright anyways. And so you don't really want the character rotating. It just kind of falls off and is always standing upright. So maybe for a lot of video games, this might be um, as close as you need to get to realistic physics. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and keep working here. Uh, today I want to implement our static bodies. And static bodies are the bodies that are not going to move that no matter what hits them or bounces off of them, they are always stationary and in place. All the bodies that we've created so far are completely dynamic. Um, they will react to all physics and all collisions. But the static bodies will just remain locked in place. And uh, before we get started with that, I'm going to go ahead and just change a few things here. Um, so here's our initialization code. We're creating a bunch of uh, random body types. And I want to change the size of our boxes to have the same area as our circles. The area of our circle is the radius times the radius times pi. So that'd just be, uh, we actually have a radius of one. So that'd be one times one times pi, uh, which is just pi, which I have right here. And then if I want to get a box that has that same area, I can just take the square root of this and that'll give me this, the length of the side I need for that box. And so we'll just do the square root of that. And so it's telling me I need a, a uh, box that has a, I need a square box that has a side of 1.77 meters. Okay, so I'm just going to change these from two to 1.77. So then our box and our circle will have pretty much the same area. And uh, we can go ahead and run that and take a look. So that looks good. Now let's go ahead and get started with our static bodies. So I'm going to go back to our body class here. We already have the ability to tell the program that our box is static. But I need to add one more field here. And this is going to be called the inverse mass. Actually, if, you, if we go back to our world class, we can take a look at every time we use the mass. And uh, here's our resolve collision. I'm almost always using the inverse mass. In fact, I may just be using the inverse mass for everything. So if I look at this, here's the inverse mass of A. Here's the inverse mass of B. Um, again, I'm dividing by the mass, which is just the inverse mass of A and the inverse mass of B right there too. So instead of using the actual mass, I'm just going to pre-calculate the inverse mass and just use that for all of my calculations in the future. So back in our body class, Let's go ahead and calculate the inverse mass. Um, we're going to have to calculate the inverse mass two different ways. Uh, one way if the body is static, and then another way if the body is dynamic. So if the body is not static, then the inverse mass is just going to be um, what you'd think the inverse mass is. The inverse mass is just going to be 1 divided by the mass. Now, if it is static, the inverse mass is just going to be 0. And that's the way we're going to represent our static objects. So anytime we have a static object, the inverse mass is just going to be zero. And we're going to use that to represent all of our, the masses of our static objects because these objects don't move. And instead of having just an infinite mass, we'll just say it's zero and then use that in all of our calculations. So let's go back to our world class. And here we are inside the resolve collision. Here, instead of dividing by the mass, I'm just going to put the inverse mass. Um, so this will be body A inverse mass. And we'll take out this whole part right here, and this will just be body B inverse mass. Okay, and now for this part here, we're, we're dividing by the mass again, so we can, just the, we can just use the inverse mass as well. And I'm just going to pre-calculate what our um, impulse is. And so this will be a flat vector, and this will be the impulse. Um, the impulse itself is actually going to be whatever J is times the normal. Okay, so J is the magnitude of the impulse, and the normal is the direction of the impulse. And so over here, we're already doing that. We're multiplying j times the normal here and then dividing by the mass. And so instead of doing that, I'm just going to put the impulse here. And then I'll put the impulse on this one as well. 
And we were also dividing by the mass. So we could divide by body A mass. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to multiply by the inverse mass. So we'll just multiply this by uh, the body A inverse mass. And then same thing here, body B inverse mass. Okay, so that should take care of all of that. And before we move on, there's actually one more thing I want to work on. If the bodies, if we get to this point and the bodies are overlapping, but their velocities are already moving apart, then what I want to do is I want, I don't want to do this calculation already because we're already moving in such a way that they're going to resolve the collision by themselves. Okay, so we're just going to put a check in here right now. Um, and we're going to see how the relative velocity relates to the normal. So if the, uh, we're going to use the flat math and do the dot product. So if the relative velocity and the normal, uh, the dot product of those two values is greater than zero, uh, then we're going to say that we're moving apart. Okay, and so we're just going to return, meaning that we're all, the objects are already moving apart, and so we don't need to do any of this. So now we've, we've done that check, and then we also um, just apply the inverse mass to our calculations, and that didn't change anything. So everything should now look exactly the same. We're just using the inverse mass now instead of the actual mass of the object. And let's just see what it looks like. Okay, so here's the one I can move. Perfect, and everything looks exactly correct. Okay, so now let's start talking about our static bodies. All right, so let's go back into our game class. Here's where we create our bodies. And I wanna make some of these static bodies. What I'm going to do here is every time we create a body, I'm going to make some of them just randomly static. Let's make a Boolean value. I'm just going to call this is static. And I'm going to use the random helper to get a random uh, Boolean. Oh, and I don't have that around. I don't have the ability to get a random Boolean right now. So let me go ahead and create that real quick inside of the uh, static library. So we'll just put this right here. Okay, there we go. Just a simple random Boolean. I can get to a random true or false value. Okay, so back in our cl game class, let's go ahead and uh, we want to get a random Boolean. And then we're just going to take this Boolean and we're going to put it into these creation functions. So I think that's right here. Yep, so is static. So instead of false, I'm going to put is static as the value. All right, and then if a value is static, I want to change the color of it. I want it to be a certain color just so we can differentiate between the static and non-static values. If it's, uh, if it's not static, then we're just going to do the same thing we were doing before. We're just going to set the colors just like this. Okay, but if it is static, let's set some different colors. So I want the color of the object to not be random. We're going to do like a, um, a dark gray. So let me actually define a new color and just make it a really dark gray value. And then I want the outline color to be red. Okay, so now we have the static bodies differentiated by different colors. Let's go ahead and go into our world class. And now when we're talking about resolving collisions, we don't want to resolve collisions between two static bodies. I'm inside the collision step here. We get the first body, we get the second body, and then I'm just going to check to see if they're both static. So if body A is static and body B is static, um, then we don't want to resolve the collision because they're both static objects. They're just stationary and we don't need to move them. So we'll just continue in the loop and skip those ones. Okay, and I'm hoping that's enough to make it work. Let's go ahead and run that and see if we have our static bodies. Okay, there we go. So the red ones with the dark gray coloring should be static. And it, it mostly works. You can see they are they are moving just a little bit. I think it's because it's because we're doing this body movement here. Our previous collision step, we would remove the overlap and then we resolve the collision. And this part here is removing the overlap. We need to check to see if these objects are static now. So if body A is static, then we just want to move body B. And so we're we're just going to tell body B to move by the, uh, want body to move by the whole depth value. Okay, so we're just gonna pass in the whole depth value. Um, so otherwise, if body B is static, uh, then body A is gonna move by the whole um, depth value. And then otherwise, they're, they're both not static. So the other case is that they're both dynamic. And so then we'll just move them both by uh, a little bit, by half of the depth amount. So here's our first step. Our, here's our first one. If body A is static, then move body B out of the collision. 
If body B is static, then move body A out of the collision. If neither of them are static, then give then move them both a little bit. Okay, so here's where we, um, so we've pretty much made it now so the bodies will move out of the collision based on if they're static or not. The only thing is here, um, A always needs to be moved by a negative normal. And so let's put the negative normal there. And let's just go ahead and run this and see what it looks like. Okay, um, it looks appropriate. Although the circles have, still have the white outline. I wonder why the circles have a white outline. Let me go back to the main game class and see where our creation is. Probably in our draw code. So in our, yeah. So let's go ahead and draw the circles with the um, outline colors at I. All right, so that should do it. Everything that is static now should be in place. And you can see I can bounce off the static objects and they don't move. But everything else that is dynamic does move. And it looks like it's working just right there. We now have our static bodies and our dynamic bodies ready to go. So now that we have these static bodies, uh, we can start simulating ground objects and then stacking up objects with gravity and things like that.